Brianna Kupfer was a graduate student at UCLA studying architectural design. I say was because she's dead. Dead at the age of 24. Killed while simply working at a furniture store trying to put herself through school. Killed by a man accused of crimes that literally spanned the country from Charleston, South Carolina to Los Angeles, California. He was out on bond, accused of shooting into a car in South Carolina, but the authorities in California didn't notify law enforcement in South Carolina when he was recently arrested. They just released him, and he killed a 24-year-old just trying to work her way through school. Rachel Dowden was waiting at a bus stop in Pennsylvania, waiting to go home after a long day at work. And she was shot and killed by a man ordered by the court to stay away from her. Court orders are no match for a bullet. Michelle Goh was waiting on the subway in New York City. She was pushed in front of a train by a man with a long criminal history and mental health issues. She's dead, killed by a man who should have been in jail or a mental hospital. Tessa Majors was a college student in New York. She was an aspiring musician. She was because she's dead too killed by teenagers over a cell phone. The prosecutor in her case noted the obvious during a court hearing when he said Tessa is gone for good. Gone from the earth for good, no more music, no more school, no more anything. And if you're wondering what the state of New York thinks her life was worth, the answer is 14 years. 14 years is what the person who killed her Received. It's hard to read about these cases and what happened to these women. No matter how long you have worked in the justice system, it is hard and painful to see beautiful, vibrant lives ended by people who should never have been in a position to hurt or kill others. And when you read stories about these four women, you will see words like compassionate and loving and kind and caring and angelic and hardworking. And now all four are dead. And I wonder where the outrage is. I see politicians getting upset about all manner of things, but where is the outrage over the only thing that really matters, which is your right to live? It's one thing to acknowledge this country is in the throes of a violent crime surge. There are plenty of statistics to back that up. These women, however, are not numbers. These women and others like them are not columns on an FBI crime index. They were daughters and sisters and wives and mothers and friends and coworkers. I took note of a phrase President Biden repeated during his press conference this week. He said, Americans want three squares and to be safe. In fact, he said it twice. Americans want to be safe. It's more than just want to be safe, Mr. President. Americans have the right to be safe because there is no liberty. There is no pursuit of happiness without life. You can't vote if you're dead. You can't sign up for a government program if you're dead. You can't build back better if you're dead. So what is he doing about it? There are elements within his party who want more violent people out on bond, more charges dropped, more light sentences. There are elements within his party who actually blame the police for the rising violent crime. There are elements of his party who literally advocate for the closing of prisons. Biden gets very animated talking about what he believes are voting rights and challenging and changing the rules of the Senate. What about changing the rules so there are fewer victims, so the innocent public is better protected? What about making sure you can work in a store without being killed or wait on a bus or stand on a subway platform or just walk home in New York? These four young women and scores more like them have forever lost the right to vote or do anything else. The right to live is the most fundamental right you have. 
And I wonder when President Biden is going to get upset about that. And when will the media ask him about that? I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.